It's opening day. Let's talk sleepers for the weekend. Up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is opening day. March 30th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And obviously, we can't talk about what's happened yet on opening day. But instead, what we'll do is we'll give you some sleepers and some pitchers to stream this upcoming weekend if you uh, are setting your lineup for the short week. So with that, Scott, let's uh, get into some of those pitchers you like. Yeah, and, and the short week is the default standard setting. It's worth pointing out because you could lump this first weekend in with the first full week, make it an 11-day scoring period. Some people prefer to do that. But the default setting is just a four-day scoring period, and uh, that may require you to turn to the waiver wire for a one-week streamer since obviously not every pitcher is going to be starting over that four-day period. Uh, my favorite, who is available in at least uh, 25% of CBS Sports Leagues, is Tyler Anderson. He's going against the Athletics in their AAA lineup. Uh, not literally, but yeah. Sonny Gray is going against the Royals. I think that's a fine choice. Graham Ashcraft, who is one of the biggest risers in spring training, of spring training in my mind, saw his strikeout rate explode with a new slider grip to pair with as a 100-mile-per-hour cutter. He gets the Pirates to begin the year, so not a bad time. You know, it's a little risky. He's not proven, I understand, but um, Pirates make for a nice matchup there if you need some help. Jared Schuster in his major league debut going against the Nationals, who are, of course, in rebuild mode. Mitch Keller, another spring riser. He's added a cutter to his arsenal. And he gets the Reds, whose lineup, their lineup's not particularly good either. It is in Cincinnati, a hitter's park, but still, I think Mitch Keller's an okay choice. So any of those five, Tyler Anderson, Sonny Gray, Graham Ashcraft, Jared Schuster, Mitch Keller, I'd be okay with starting them. I'll give you five more names just in case, but these are lower down in priority, and you know, hopefully you don't have to start them. Zach Eflin against the Tigers. Nick Martinez against the Rockies. Rockies on the road. Much better matchup than when they're at Coors Field. Eduardo Rodriguez against the Rays. David Peterson against the Marlins. And Clark Schmidt against the Giants. And as you might have deduced by now, the teams that we're looking to stream against most this year, at least stream our pitchers against, the Tigers, the A's, the Marlins probably won't strike out as much, but I don't know that they'll do that much damage either. The Pirates, the Nationals, the Royals, and probably the Reds, and the Rockies on the road, as Scott mentioned. What about sleeper hitters for the short week, the next four days, the four days to open the season? Scott, who are we looking at there? So, I, I mentioned already the Reds are facing the Pirates. The Pirates don't have much to speak of pitching-wise. I mean, maybe Mitch Keller has a breakout season, but we don't think they're going to be that good on the whole, and uh, that makes it a good time to play another big spring training riser, mine, Jake Fraley, who, frankly, was good in the second half last year, too. I like Jake Fraley a lot for this week, like him overall. Uh, I also like Spencer Steer for the Reds. Will Myers, I wanted to see more from him this spring, but since it is in Cincinnati, there's hope that uh, you know he could take advantage of that environment this year, beginning with his opening weekend against the Pirates. I also like the Rockies this week. They, they play four games instead of three, one of the few teams doing that. Uh, it is away from Coors Field. You normally don't like starting Rockies hitters away from Coors Field, but that's partly because there's this thing called the Coors Field effect where... Uh, they, they're used to seeing the ball move to certain physics in the thin air, and then the next series after they leave, they it's difficult for them to adjust uh, adjust their expectations with how the ball's going to move. But they're not coming out of course Field. Haven't played there yet. They've been in the Cactus League. So no course Field effect, I think. Elahiros Montero, the third baseman who had a big spring, is worth starting in that Padre series. Ezekiel Tovar, rookie shortstop with across-the-board potential. I like him a lot for this week. Jared Kelnick, uh, who had a big spring, of course, he also has four games uh, this opening weekend, and all right-handers he's facing as a left-handed hitter. So not a bad time to roll the dice on him if you're a believer, and if you drafted him, you're probably a believer to some degree. And then Marcelo Zuna, if you need to look a little deeper had a pretty good spring. The Braves are facing the Nationals. 
this weekend, a couple of really homer prone pitchers in Patrick Corbin and Josiah Gray. So Ozuna or really anybody in the Braves lineup, not a bad choice. All right, Scott, we did it, man. The off season is over. Opening day is here. Thank you to everyone for watching us all off season, supporting us, um, watching, listening. We really do appreciate it. But now the real fun begins. We get games uh, coming up this weekend, real live action that we'll be able to talk about uh, and Really looking forward to it. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye! 